Now after learning all of the Apex testing, it's time to understand uh, the best practices that you need to follow while learning, uh, while, while doing Apex testing. Cover as many lines of Apex code as possible, including all the branches of conditional logic. So again, the code coverage should, like there's a limit that it should be more than 75%. But listen to me, it's not only about taking that like meter to more than 75%, it's about doing the testing in such a way that your code is robust and non-breakable in any situation or in any scenario. So make sure that you're not only focusing on the code coverage. Uh, it, it definitely is an important parameter, but uh, you're, you're making sure that your code is getting tested properly. And in order to increase the coverage, there are different, different ways that you have to follow that, uh, and that comes up like if there is an if condition, so then you have to write down uh, for both of the uh, like for both of the conditions to be evaluated if there is an if else condition or something like that. Uh, if like you have to execute that same code for all the conditional branching that is happening because of if else if or any other conditional statements or something like that. Next, use the system.run as method. We have done it earlier. Uh, to test record level access for users in code being tested. So if you want to check or evaluate that whether this user has got access to this particular uh, record or not, then uh, all what you need to do is you need to use uh, system.run as method in order uh, in the test method to define uh, which user is actually executing it. Otherwise, uh, all of the testing that will be done will be done on to the administrator le administrative level. So uh, if, if you want to do it on a user level in, in order to check or verify whether the security and sharing settings are working fine or not, then you need to uh, use system.run as method as well. Always handle all exceptions that are caught instead of merely catching the exception. So what a lot of developers do is they just, they just put a try catch block, uh, which we have learned in the exception handling, and they just catch it and they do, then they do nothing about it. You have to catch it and also like handle it properly. You need to do the appropriate things required for the situation in which you are catching a particular exception, right? Make use of system.assert and system.assert equals. There, there must not have been a single program in which we haven't used this system.assert or system.assert equal statement. Uh, why? Because without it, testing doesn't actually happen. I mean, if you're doing testing without system.assert or system.assert equals, uh, then in that case, all what you're doing is you're just trying to cover up the code and you're not actually testing anything, right? Yeah, and you need to do it to verify the expected results. Try to cover both positive and negative test scenario by passing valid and invalid inputs to the Apex code, again. Uh, use start test and stop test methods uh, to avoid governor limits while testing actual code of the functionality. All test data should be created outside and prior to calling these methods. So yeah, again, the same thing. Uh, I mean, we have learned it earlier, right? Test.start test method and test.stop test method. This is exactly what we need to do if we think that uh, this particular uh, set of code can exceed the governor limits or not. So yeah, these are some best practices that you need to follow while uh, doing Apex testing. I hope you are able to understand Apex testing well.